Hello everyone, welcome to an episode of G.I. Joburg. My name is Steven, I'm joined by my buddy Paul. Hey Paul. Hey. And in October <laughs> of 2019, we showcased a, a modification for a video game called Arma 3, produced by a guy called Scott Gilmore. We have the creator in our presence on this fine video, and he's going to give us a showcase uh, from the horse's mouth, as it were. Hello, Scott. Hey guys, how's it going? Good to be here. How are you guys? We are very excited, buddy. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. where are we? What's going on, man? Okay, so we're in um, an arsenal um, starting point on a, on a jungle map. And um, I'm loading in just your basic green shirt right now, so he looks the part of... Uh, Grunt! Six... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. To avoid using names, he's a 61st Joint Task Force, which is, as we remember from the podcast, that's my clever way of not saying G.I. Joe. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, our typical M16 bearing basic green shirt. What does Hasbro call him now? Steel. Steel Brigades? No. no they... Steel oh, Battalion. No. Do you oh, know that no. Hasbro no longer have the right to the word Steel Brigade? I did the not term. know that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Bobby Valor of Action Force has the trademark on that. Yeah. <laughs> you snooze, cool, you right? lose, Hasbro. Wow. And but yeah, no, this, like... this guy looks like an update on an original 13, uh, who we all know and love. What is yeah. that? Oh. Oh. It's a vamp. It's a oh. sexy, sexy vamp. So I got like tons of questions. One of the things I wanted to find out is, are you guys going to like do more skins for some of the quote unquote Joe vehicles? Um, you know, with the sort of subsequent toy releases, you get like the beige one and then you got the, the most recent 50th anniversary version, which is like a digi camo, like a gray digi camo type thing. My intention is to have at least um, an olive version of every of every vehicle that that was mm -hmm. olive in, in the example of a, of a typical 61st vehicle. Um, an mm -hmm. olive and a desert version, and then perhaps a woodland version, which would be just, you know, olive with some camo on it. Like you see the olive, um, not. But Scott, the question on everyone's lips has got to be will you ever get into the neon? No, <laughs> never. No. Oh, I what mean, a shame. I mean, maybe as well, like a future, you know, add on, not an add on, but like a, a sequel maybe i don't know like i i have thought about like how i would incorporate future gi joe stuff because i don't want to have everything in this mod you know people ask me like oh are you gonna have um this vehicle or that vehicle are you gonna have the the cobra um beetle jet like from like i think 88 or 89 it was like a it kind of looked like dirge from uh transformers mm, a little bit that would be the oh, hurricane, hurricane from 1990 yeah, yeah. man um, you oh, it's a like good a, looking a jet. Thing. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> it's a cool thing, but it kind of doesn't fit this right now. It's like it's like phase two of the whole conflict. Like maybe there was a lull, and then Cobra or Vibra resurfaced. I've got to agree with you on that score, Scott. I mean the the golden years, eighty two to eighty. I don't know, should we go as far as 86? No, not even. Uh, well, I suppose you, you do have the, 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 not, the not fire bat. So 86 would be uh, the last year of that that period. Right, and um, I, I think that all the way up through, like it bleeds in some some of the assets uh, are good up to like 87, maybe 88. But there's just some that just start becoming a little bit too um, out of sync, I think. Who's that handsome fella beside you in the, the the Puma? Okay, so this is Thunder. He's um, this is his server that we're running on right now, and um, he's actually playing Zeus, but he's also facilitating um, just the the setup of the environment and things like that, so that we kind of get a feel for it. We're on a map. This is a custom map, um, not a not an A3, not an Arma 3 um, vanilla map. It's just something that somebody else made, but it's really well done and it kind of shows off. Hey, Thunder. The assets. <laughs> Hello. Taking us for a lovely drive around this lush tropical environment. 
so got lots of uh, 61st members on patrol presumably and i think the vamp would have been largely improved by having a, a screen like that that is a lovely, lovely addition. Nice job on that, Scott. You practically thought out ways of bringing this vehicle to life. You know, how, how do we solve the problem of a turret that has no seating behind it? No one's actually physically manipulating those guns. It's being right. manipulated by the guy in the passenger seat, but the guy in the passenger seat needs some kind of display, and you created that. Yeah. And oh, that the cartoon fantastic. addressed it a little bit. They had, um, I remember there was an episode with um, Roadblock sitting behind the gun on the back. Yeah. And I'm like, that's just not very practical because one bump and he's out of there, you know. Or if It's the... not a seat. It, you know, the, the, um, the comic book did the same cheat. Oh. But the toy obviously, you know... You... It's, you very quickly see that the emperor is wearing no clothes. <laughs> uh, the the comic book even went as far as to 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 detail that Clutch has a little remote control device which he keeps in his breast pocket, and that is where he controls the the cannon remotely from. But that is a very very loose example of of how to remotely control something. I'm half expecting like Dutch and the gang to like sort of you know walk across the road. Come on, because <laughs> you know? this this whole like map that you've got going is very. It just reminds me of the the, the first Predator. So you quickly well, see how like that's that is how we usually play is like um, it feels like a very sort of realistic interaction when we play as a team. Whoa, we're getting some desync started flying off the road randomly that was my driver oh okay <laughs> no, we, were, we really were flying off the road oh okay, okay though i must say excellently handled i mean this is a essentially a driving sim as well as uh you know yeah, really military cool. simulation and thunder pause yeah man i think i would have lost contact with the road a number of times by now Fun out. Up ahead. What do we got? Straight ahead down the road we got. Alright, I have I have a signature on it looks like a standard trooper. Yep. So I'm just gonna pop him in the head with this. <laughs> oh, with there these he goes. Dual honking cannons. Each signature, don't lie. So yeah, this is uh -oh. how we would. Um, this is how the yeah. game kind of participates. Is like creeping around, and then you find um, a lot of times we've just rolled up onto a hornet's nest, and then end up in a hot spot, and you know had to fight, fight for our lives and get out of a spot real quick. And it doesn't always work. Sometimes we've had to restart because we all got taken down. <laughs> Oof, we're about to find out if a vamp can really take on a hiss. Okay. Especially your armored up hiss. I mean, it's like you've taken the best elements of uh, the DTC hiss, but still kept the, the top turret from the classic hiss. Actually, I tried to keep most of the styling of the classic hiss, but yeah. I do incorporate a few. Except for the that one cannon. that looked kind of like a snake and like... <laughs> <laughs> hate that. The Mark III, I think. III, I think. Or, yeah, it's history. three or four. It's is a cool three? vehicle, it's just not a hiss to me. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like and a it's funny game for the head comes up. It, it, uh, <laughs> it went one further than the classic hiss, and not only is the gunner's top half exposed, but his bottom half as well. It's just <laughs> ridiculous. He's riding a gun chair of death. Fair though, stop, uh, stop. it does better provide better protection for uh, the, the guys piggybacking in the back. Oh, hey, Storm. Mm. Hey. Alrighty. Are you in the server? Not yet. I've been having some internet troubles, uh, so I'm trying to download one of the uh, mods because it's been a while since I've talked in there. Alright, gentlemen, that's Storm Shield. I told you about him earlier. He's finally Hello. able to join us. Welcome to the party, Storm Shield. Oh, damn, you're being swamped. Yes. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, there's, 
it's three Put your three foot three. down, Thunder. It's a little hard to keep the um, vehicle. Oh yeah, we are getting. Uh, you you exact. just interrupted their smoke break, man. I mean, <laughs> three of them are hiding behind the the the, the little barracks there. Of course, you needed mobility to get to this point, but I uh, bet you wish you had moved in some armor. <laughs> I definitely do. Well, we were showing off the Puma. <laughs> it's a beaut. It definitely is the warm, fuzzy center of things. I always, I, and I think I speak for most Joe fans, the Vamp has always been just one of the funnest vehicles, yeah. most inviting play patterns, because who didn't like a Jeep? It just had oh, adventure written all over it. Yeah. Tough little toy. And uh, metal axles, which, you know, love them or hate them, they definitely were more robust than plastic wheels on uh, plastic uh, mushroom pegs. Of course, they always develop that signature squeal. <laughs> Thank goodness for WD 40. Okay, I'm reloading. <laughs> Yeah, very much so. I remember that <laughs> that squeal. I don't know if WD-40 was good for the plastic, though. That seems to have done all right. It's a good uh, cleaning um, agent as well for sticky stuff. Oh, yeah. you got, like, sticker residue. Uh, I've found oh. lubricants like WD-40 to be pretty, pretty harmless. I don't know. Paul, would you back me up on that? Uh, WD-40 I haven't used a lot of. Um... Uh, because I'm too scared. I'm also like I have the same opinion. I'm worried about putting it on plastic. But I mean, if you've managed to do it for so long, it's worth me trying out. Um, uh, yeah. Look, toy fans out there, don't follow my words. Gugon. But I, any time yeah. I use it, I it's, remove it very quickly. But goo gone is very difficult to get in. Another one that works really well, actually. Uh, I've only discovered it recently. I mean, it's always been there. All right. See if you can get us out of here, Thunder. Stand by. Smart move, getting into that kind of depression. Yeah. Only the turret is poking out of the top. And that is kind of the advantage that the Hiss slash Komodo has. Right. Um, that, you know, by mounting your gunner position as, as high as that, and your driver, for instance, it can eff effectively peer over obstacles, uh, providing better visibility. But, yeah, no, it's... <laughs> It's not going to hold its own against the main battle tank. Thankfully, yeah, thankfully nobody was in that thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, currently there is a little bit of a design flaw in the Puma right now, and it's um, super indestructible. Um, it can be Wonderful. Equipping. It can be exploded, but if you're sitting in it, you're, even though it's an open cockpit... Um, you are impervious. Imper yeah. You're you're protected by its bubble of, of, of protection. Look, it has an as invisible kids, layer of armor somewhere on it. <laughs> as oh. kids, I think we took uh, every Joe vehicle that had a lot of glass and a lot of exposed gunner positions and crew positions, driver positions, as having some kind of invisible force field. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think if, if you put your figure into a vehicle, there was it was a given that you were protected somehow. There was it's some modicum armor. of protection. There you go, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Hey, Thunder, All you need to do is make a, a mad dash to a vehicle and you'd be saved. Right, yeah. And <laughs> I wonder where we learned that from. Cartoons. That's Video true games. of this, yeah. this modification. It's wonderful. Nice job on giving the Puma some gloss up front. Yep. Something I wish the Vamp had. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's always a bit corny. Oh, damn, what happened to Thunderpaws? Oh, he's Sleeping on the job. He's living it up. <laughs> he um desync or not desync. Um, he despawned so that he can be Zeus, and I think he's gonna respawn. Hey Puma, can you? I sense crystal ball at work, man. Someone's <laughs> yeah. playing mind games with you. You you took a you took a trip into the deep jungle and and you never came out the same. <laughs> Tell me, is there a dash gun, a sort of a a, a hood cannon? On your Puma? A that... Oh, that thing? I had no idea what to do with that, so I just made that a, um, a turbo scoop. An air, air intake. Yeah. yeah. It, and okay. I know that's... But it just kind of completes the look without actually fulfilling 
whatever a function that might have been yeah i mean it, it, to me it looked like an exposed um s steering um cylinder you know hey uh, rooster i did a respawn oh, okay when you do a respawn we'll save some time and choose apc one i was okay can you do me a favor real quick can you respawn um can you spawn in a puma that has the tarp I mean, Ooh. We have a Puma in front of us with um, the added tarp. This is kind of a uh, preview uh, to the... Why isn't it 10, man? To the Where, uh, two, right? Where's the rocket pod? <laughs> it's a Puma 1.5. Yeah, so they'll, they'll both... Well, this version will have the... the I, I haven't decided yet on the full um, Mark II if I want to have it um, removable, because it's missiles, you know, do you want a convertible top while missiles are launching over your head? Do you want to get that potential back blast burning your... Cobra <laughs> says yes. Oh, okay. Well, Cobra <laughs> definitely would. Cobra has people, like, riding behind their <laughs> missiles. So, so course, what? Right? The, the the Puma Mark One has this invisible protection field, <laughs> but the second you put a top over it, that goes away? Hey, come on, man. No, I know, but um, yeah, I don't know. We get could... sticklers for realism. I know like the, the there's a lot of love for the Puma, and that is my um, favorite four-wheeled vehicle in the game, but I wanted to kind of move on to the shock hopper if we don't mind let me uh, pull it out of this misty spot if it's uh sure so i do storm shield driving so does yeah. armor also allow you guys to make uh unique weapons uh so for example i see like i i think you're packing like it looks like an m16 <laughs> but i can't tell uh, um uh, but like, for example, like a Viper's rifle, you know, that they, their guns are so famous, they, they sort of complete the, the character or the, the, the trooper. Um, is there like a potential for that kind of thing to exist in armor? Like there is, there is indeed. I mean, and you know, the cartoon um, M16 replacement, whatever that laser blaster is that came... Uh, XLMR, yeah. Yeah. So you guys we, can do stuff like that. That's we could cool. make a yeah, we could make a bullet firing or even if we really wanted to, we could probably make one fire blasters. Um I kind of wanted to stay away from blasters and lasers and stuff like that unless we're using like actual laser technology like solid yeah. you know, like a continuous beam. Um yeah. and there are laser pointers in this game, so there's a way to mm -hmm. do that. It would just be a matter of putting a, um, a hit effect on it but yeah we can put we can make custom vehicles custom um, uh, weapons and uh, the, it, there are some constraints obviously but um, yeah. if you if it sh fired a certain way and used a certain round and had a certain recoil and everything like that we can control those aspects um, and then Cool. And give it the whatever look we wanted to, you know. I could make it look like a hand. Okay. <laughs> Scotty. Yes. Flat out uh, road race, which is faster, shock hopper or puma? Uh, I think the shock hopper is the faster. Puma. Ah, the puma. Uh, oh. Yes, definitely. Oh. <laughs> now, like the shock hopper has like different terrain um, functions. But it has, I, I capped its top speed at around 100, 100 kilometers per hour, if I remember correctly. And the Puma is like 180 um, kilometers per hour. Because I wanted it to be a little bit close to the real life. Um, Lamborghini Cheetah. Yeah, yeah, which was, I think, 140 miles per hour top speed. And then. Uh, and then I'm like accounting for all the ex extra weight that goes onto a Puma, maybe, and things like that, you know, yeah. with the added weapon. So, um, and plus, you gotta you gotta dumb it down for military anyway, because um, you know they can't have things that go like crazy fast. <laughs> yeah. Just wipe themselves <laughs> out. Uh, tell me, the primary armament of the shock hopper? Did you go with the ten round recoilless cannon? No, this is just a placeholder, um, just something to make the vehicle um, 
usable in a, in a firefight. So gotcha. It's so a, it's a just a grenade machine launcher. gun. Yeah. Oh, machine grenade, grenade launcher. launcher. So oh, you get the loot. I have been debating on what to do because ten rounds for this thing seems sort of um, oh look unreasonable. Yeah, yeah unless we're going after like more high threat armored targets and you know so then your shots count. Uh, but if I'm just like spraying an area with grenades, then I think this works. But we might want to do like keep this on as a uh, potential alternate weapon so yeah i've been working on some of the alternate weapons a little bit here and there also for some of the uh, vibra um, assets so here it is you can barely see it through this fog but um it's got the hard top mm -hmm. um, sensible yeah <laughs> So, a little bit of, um, uh, you know, uh, harkens to realism. There's a real um, Renault VAB that I thought was the best influence for this, and I, I kind of borrowed for that. But um, modern up, I have an updated version, which I haven't put into the game. It has um, a camo netting for the back, which replaces the it's still a hard top but it has that camo netting around it which gives the look of the canvas yeah and i see you went with the uh the action force atc style turrets oh yeah i i felt like the one on the um the 82 version was or the 83 version was um outdated was it 83 okay. or 84 that the APC came out? 83. Uh, 83. Yeah. Not only a vehicle, but a carry case as well. What fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, does of... your bumper pull out? That's kind of what is going on with this thing. I mean, it has um, some firepower. It fills a role when we're, when we're developing our missions and stuff like that. It has, um, it serves as a spawn point. Um, where people can, you don't have to run all the way back to the action. It's also amphibious, which is kind of, um, a lot of people in the modding, Arma modding community steer clear of making amphibious vehicles just because there's a lot of headache involved in that. But, um, this thing... Would it be possible to give it rockets? It would. <laughs> On top of the turret? It would. That's definitely a possibility. Because the shade of green that you've utilized is very close to the Z Force green. Okay. I just saw a whale. Did I see a whale? Am you I going crazy? You may have seen a whale. You might have seen oh. uh, that the, the prototype for such a thing. <laughs> oh, oh, something that looks like. Okay, cool. So the whale think, is yeah. actually called the chariot. And the chariot. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Um, I have. It's to me. I consider it a. Um, aircraft even though it's um, you know it's a ground vehicle but it's an aircraft and I've been trying to name my aircraft after uh, with angelic or biblical references so All right, the okay. chariot was one of the angels um, it's like a series of spinning wheels or something like that and yeah the chariot yeah I, I am familiar but yeah that's so that's a very cool choice with the wow. with the conquest be the cherub and the sky striker will be the seraph so you have the c oh, nice. theme and the s theme but um, oh, this apc cool. has got some insane handling it just yeah. is eating yeah. the terrain yeah it's very that's one of the things that the guys like about it when they drive it around is um how well it goes over the terrain so this yeah because this game's got like a serious physics engine like, uh it's the physics point. engine uh can be broken by just shooting enough bullets, <laughs> <laughs> having to bounce around on stuff. So I had quite a lot of fun uh, picking people off with the uh, Komodo's cannons. <laughs> That's always a joy. I've kind oh, of wow. added some functionality to the main guns. They have a, a up and down and a left and right range, and they move in unison. Thank goodness Ooh. for that. 
Yeah, Scott, uh, I think uh, you are able in you know, with the, the unlimited resources of creating these things digitally, you're able to correct the the practical shortcomings of the toys. <laughs> I mean, they're magnificent toys, but they couldn't sort of open and shut like a real world vehicle would. Oh, but this so cool. is spectacular. Oh my word. And it's incredible know. that the whale can transit slopes like this. Yeah. I've always been wondering what the handling of a hovercraft is. You know, can it actually be used on land? Or is it merely sort of beaches, that's it? And like wetlands, swampy areas, you know, where there's a mixture of water and bits of sand. Right. But here you've got it, it, you are bashing through trails here, man. <laughs> um, who's driving? It's incredible. Is that, thunder, is that thunder driving? Or is that storm driving? Yep. I'm on the gun. Okay. Is there a limitation to where you can take your chariot? There... No woods. There, yeah, there are limitations. There should be more limitations. This is like, um, a lot of it falls under, uh, I haven't programmed or I haven't set up enough of the programming or the scripting to allow to give it real life uh, limitations like it should. So it does traverse a little bit more than it should. Now I did spend a lot of time in trying to get it to glide and slide around like a hovercraft does. On, um, mm, on it the feels to have very ju juicy handling. It does kind of have some uh, inertia to it. Yeah. But it's just magnificent. And in terms of the soundscape, we're not we're not getting the sound at the moment. What is it? What's it doing? Is it like a really, really loud drone? Um, it's using tank sounds right now. Oh, not okay, so not a fan. Yeah, not, it's it's a stand-in. You know, everything about this is right now, even though I want the model to kind of look a, a little bit like this, or I mean mostly like this when it's finished, it's still all of a stand-in, a working um, concept very much. So, um, you know, this one is nice to have it in closed cockpit, though. I must yes. say, that's another <laughs> another thing that I wish the toy had. <laughs> you know, the second you're you're in any kind of inclement weather, all cutters get in the brunt of it. Right. In fact, so much so, I just read an issue of the IDW sort of continuation <laughs> continuation of the, uh, the Real American Hero comic book. And uh, they do set the sort of bridge into the body of the craft. Uh, so it, it's, it pretends like there are controls oh. in the sort of the troop compartment. Whereas we all know, you know, that's just sort of blank surface on the toy. Some, <laughs> some foot pegs. <laughs> so this, this varmint, which is the not armadillo, I have the ability to control the turret and move, drive the vehicle at the same time. And the turret has about a 110 degree um, turn on left and right, so mm -hmm. 220 total. Um, and I can, you know, I have full cockpit view, I can move it. Um, when I zoom in to the right right mouse click allows you to see the scope uh, view of what's going on. And then that's a very excellent way to control it without having all of the um, the interior space all up in your face. So then you just get back to the action and um, you can drive it around like that. And you can go in and out this now this vehicle is made for um, somebody who has like a head tracking because I'm looking around with my head tracking device and I can look all around the cockpit mm. I can still control oh, cool. it and um, open the top kind of and... approximates the challenge of operating an armadillo for real yes it's a one man tank so exactly. one man is responsible for the left track, the right track, the turret's left and right movement, and up and down movement. 
and all of those planes of motion make for a lot of activity happening in that very cramped cockpit. <laughs> right. <laughs> I see a chair up ahead. All this for a vehicle that didn't come with a dedicated driver. I tell you, the armadillo deserves one. Whoever is able to get on top of one of these vehicles deserves to be specialized. Did, did you just blow up? I did, I blew up. <laughs> Something killed me. <laughs> I think we need air support. Would you agree? I do agree. Who's that? Is that? Yep. It's been a while since I've flown this. Oh god. Auto factory. Turn on! Oh gosh, trees! <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the cavalry. Uh, kinda. <laughs> There was some oh, de-sync so cool. going on with that. Oof. So I'm going to get in one, two. Um, there wasn't much, I think, th just what we saw of the Varmint. It's an awesome vehicle. It's a little bit uber. Once it's uh, available, I need to also dial back the guns. Now, that's a quad battery of guns that you would find on an Apache in a single mm. gun. So there's four of them, and an Apache has one. And imagine the <laughs> devastation that an Apache unleashes. So the armad the armadillo is a little bit uber. I feel like a a quad M2, like the the guns on the back of the uh, Puma, are M2 based. I feel like that would be sufficient. Warhawk. So I've done some uh, visual uh, rearranging of the Warhawk since the ODST um, review video. And so now the missiles are on the tips of the wings instead of under the wings. And I've got some uh, air brakes going on that kind of validate the sudden um, stop ability that it has. Um, mm. So they deploy... Oh, something just shot me down. That was crazy. Uh, I thought it was just a tree getting in uh, up on you and you. Yeah, that is the most sudden air break of all. When <laughs> you rub up against a tree. Or get intercepted by a Sam. <laughs> and I know people are going to want to know what uh, kind of timeline. Is it possible to get one out of you for when that whale or chariot might be fully skinned up and, you know... Is that a tomahawk? Complete. I would say... Um... That's going to be difficult because I really need. Um, uh, he's a busy boy. Subscribers for that. You yes. Know? The more subscribers I have, then the more time I can spend doing this. I can validate it with my wife and my family, to. Um, Amen. Spend, and, and you know, make a make a little bit of a living for them, um, to to do this work. Now it is a labor of love and and. You know, I don't think this would be possible without it, but the realism sets in, and I simply can't... It's got to eat! Yeah. Mm. Kids yep. got to so, eat. So, I mean, that, the, the, the easiest answer for anyone listening to this and watching this incredible demonstration is by giving this man your support, you yeah. can assure more content, more completed vehicles... More ability to play in this incredible sandbox. Yeah, and it's up to you guys, you know. And that's kind of why I started picking out some of these teaser um, vehicles <laughs> that people are more interested in seeing, like the Tomahawk, and this is called the Samson, and the mm. Cherub. Um, Samson because it's strong and it can do a lot of damage. So biblical. Mm -hmm. It's got a luscious head of hair. <laughs> it does. <laughs> and, Blowing in the fans. And unfortunately, if you chop its hair off, it will not. <laughs> it definitely Fly. will not uh, <laughs> be as powerful. So yeah. Oh, so that was what I saw earlier. I was so like, "Ooh, is that? Uh, can it be?" Yeah. And mm. I recently mm. got nicely to upscaled. Mine. I do feel like it's a more substantial vehicle than the toy. Yes. ever seem to be i mean this looks like it could 
hoist uh, some serious equipment up. It I mean, would can. would it would it fulfill that function? Would it have a winch? It does. It can. And it, it does. <laughs> Incredible. It'll lift. In terms of armament, what uh, what's it packing? Six air-to-ground missiles. It has um, a chin turret with um, a Gatling and um, a grenade machine gun launcher. Uh, we want to test the, the guns. We had Northwest. There's targets. Okay. So they'll probably kill us though, but it'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a big moving target, so that's one of the drawbacks. It 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 has some firepower, but it's also um, a high priority target for enemies. So it's not just something that they'll let um, cause havoc. Just like uh, how Chinook seem to be deployed with the back gate down. That's pretty authentic. Might you um, work on having a gunner position rearwards? Oh yeah, there'll be some ex some added um, assets. And you got to have the dorsal guns, of course. Yeah. So, that's some things. Is that a grenade launcher alongside the minigun? It is. So I have Lovely. the minigun on the left, and the grenade launcher on the right. Very smart takeoff. Gee whiz. Mm. Sorry, and I don't have much for an interior on these things, but that's one of the drawbacks of it being a placeholder. Um, Thunder, no, buddy, we know we can... know what it's meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to see if we can lift something? By all means. Show Please. These, yeah. Show these guys. Um, can you lift an APC? I can lift an APC. With this thing, I created it so that it could lift at least the Black Bear, and subsequently, it's been able to lift the Black Bear, the APC, the um, which I have called the Bloodhound APC. Uh, now, it's comparable com com comparable to real world physics. I don't know what the load bearing capacity of a Chinook is, but can you transport a tank? Um, I cannot put it in, but I can, um, we can, oh, in a Chinook, you cannot. I, I'm just saying, I mean, can you speculatively, like, is that, is that, is it physically possible? It has to be a light tank, so a, a Chinook yes. has about, uh, 13, um, Imperial ton, uh, load capacity, I think is what it was. Let me... All right. Am I thinking of that? Maybe I'm using the wrong metrics. And, and uh, I suppose a, 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 an Abrams is, what is it, like 60 tons? Yeah. Yeah, way too heavy. Thereabouts. Mm -hmm. um, you could put a... But you say that, that this Tomahawk, or uh, what did you call it, Samson? Yes. He he can lift... Oh, he, he's strong. <laughs> <laughs> he can lift a black bear or Mauler. Incredible. Um, the, uh, cockpit glass, is that sort of also a work in progress? Would you like to get a sort of a, a clean, single, um, bubble? Um, no, I actually like this because it's, um, it's a Sikorsky design, which is a real yes. helicopter, um, mm -hmm. manufacturer. And many aspects of the original Tomahawk borrow greatly from the sea stallion and the super stallion and everything like that is one of the major inspirations for mm -hmm. this and then um obviously the chinook like, wow. <laughs> the footprint of the styling definitely comes from Oops. sikorsky which is that <gasps> that sea knight sea stallion sorry i'm just laughing at the, <laughs> the spidey spider web sort of uh, <laughs> hoisting that was very armor <laughs> Arma does a lot of things really well, and then some things, some it just has struggles with. Um, Could you essentially launch that vehicle as a weapon? Like you just, if you just dumped it on on a bunch of enemies, would that actually like kill them? Yeah, if you drop it on them, and it, if it results in it being damaged to the point it explodes, it'll kill everybody within the explosion radius. Yeah, people have done that. It's kind of a silly thing to do in Arma. Um, and a lot of servers, because some people take the game a little bit too seriously, 
they would yeah. they would be frowned upon you doing that or they would be frowning upon you doing that so i guess it just depends but i mean mm. it's definitely feasible if you can get close enough um to such a hot spot but you can actually uh, when they first introduced sling loading before i made any helicopters i got into an arma 3 helicopter and um whatever the occupants of the vehicle were doing down below and it was an armed vehicle and they were enemies and i flew over them and i picked them up and i dropped them into the ocean <laughs> whatever whatever they were doing that like it took me a while to do that but whatever they were doing it was like okay well you know i think they were just trying to figure out they were just blown away by what was going on they were just mesmerized but um <laughs> <laughs> just imagine that happening in real life hey uh, do your wheels deploy did i just see landing gear essentially yes. come down okay nice touch very cool. I suppose it would be smart of the Tomahawk to have had retractable landing gear to have a, a cleaner configuration. Yeah. But it would have also been nice if they had sliding doors on the sides. <laughs> <laughs> that You're making me wish I had my toy currently. Uh, it is a personal favorite vehicle of mine. So seeing it in digital form is, is, a, is a very cruel tease. Oh, well, that's part of the point i think is to make people salivate over this stuff so that they want to shell out some coin you know oh mission accomplished <laughs> i am definitely salivating at this point and i i'm pretty sure our viewers are as well but scott i think this is a useful point to leave it at for uh, for at least this video okay uh depending on how people uh, like it we might just do another one how many likes should we make it uh I don't know, let's say 200 likes, and we'll do another one of these, listeners and viewers. Oh, I'm excited. I mean, I had to. I had a big smile on my face now as uh, he was flying that tomahawk across the screen so we could see it from the uh, from its left side, its port side. And uh, I had to laugh because I was like, wow, where's the hand? There's no hand holding this helicopter. I'm so used to seeing this thing with like a giant hand holding it. Um, yeah, you've been watching too many G.I. Joburg play motions, my friend. Jeez, that cowboy and the tomahawk. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't wild, Bill. That's true, and I Scott, also I took Yeah. Thanks to you great. and your and your and your tireless crew, man. But mainly, I mean, this is all you, baby. Well done. I, I hope that uh, you're able to continue your great work. Thank you, guys. That, that helicopter is totally propped up by its chain gun cam. <laughs> <laughs> Authentic tricycle landing gear. Beautiful. All right. Here we go. Into the danger zone, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Oh, look at this beauty. I'm glad you gave it its white color scheme <laughs> over the uh, the sort of the battleship gray that the toy came in. Right. The white is so much more brilliant. It actually it is more gray, experimental. But the sun oh, it is. gets, you know, washes it out, so it brightens it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like that light goes gray thing. It's like it's gray when you see it in the shadow, but when you see it in the light, it looks like white. Yeah. It's just an effect of uh, how Arma artwork happens. I mean, it's... Yeah, if I made it white in the texture, it would... All of the detail would definitely be washed out. So, and there's no there's no detail on it right now as far as texture detail. It's just... But the angles are all correct. Which is something that is such a signature of the Conquest. Yeah. So many sharp contrasting angles diagonal lines going backwards forwards converging off to the side vertical or vertical it's just it's aggressive man it's just so full of sharp pointy things and they're all lovingly reproduced here Sorry, I got scott once I got again thanks so much buddy <laughs> this has been beautiful eye candy deluxe awesome <laughs> 
Thank you. Yeah, that's a... On a fire, you know. 